Hola, happy Wednesday. Feliz miércoles. Magic Girls, Magic Kids to Spanish. Y estamos en la lección 33. Let me show it to you. Lección número 33. And as always, I'm going to start with my PowerPoint and I'm going to show you a very known place in Venezuela called El Salto de Ángel, the Ángel Falls. I think I've shown this before, um, but I, on a different perspective. So I'm going to show you, let me put up my PowerPoint. And Ángel Falls is a waterfall in Venezuela. It is the world's tallest uninterrupted waterfall with a height of 979 meters and a plunge of 807 meters. The waterfall drops over the edge of the Ollantacuy Mountain in the Canaima National Park a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the Gran Sabana region of Bolivar State. So I've talked to you about the Gran Sabana, a place that my parents uh, used to take us anytime that they could. It's uh, La Gran Sabana, it's a plain, but within those plains, there are mountains um, and the Canaima National Park is there and the Angel Fort Falls is something that you have to see it to believe it and to believe that there's something greater out there that has created this amazing world for us again if you get a chance to go to venezuela that is one place i recommend for you to visit so now we are in los objetivos del día lección 33 lesson 33 in the book and páginas 290 a la 299, pages 292, 299 in the, in the work, in the book. And then we're going to move on to versos bíblicos. Again, most of you who are just listening to this, I'm going to take you through the majority of the content. Those of you that are looking at the slides, you're going to see the uh, work, the book pages and follow along. Lección número 33, and we are on page 290. And at the top part, uh, it shows la puerta y la ventana, the window, the door, and the window. The Spanish verb has great versatility. Nothing shows this more clearly than the third man verb form, which can be used in six different ways. See, vio, below, which is see. When you add pronouns to the third man verb from form, you get even a greater variety. The following examples and exercises show how much a little word like vio can yield when used with pronouns. Examples. Vio means you saw, he saw, she saw. Did you see? Did he see? Did she see? Si lo vio. You saw him. He saw him. She saw him. In a uh, question mark, you could, use, you could use it as, did you see him? Did he see him? Did she see him? Si lo vio. And then on the feminine side, la vio. You saw her, he saw her, she saw her. El la vio. Usted la vio. Ella la vio. Did you see her? Did she see her? Did he see her? Did she see her? Now we're moving into page 291 and we're going to see the word invite, invito in the past tense. You invited, he invited, she invited. Lo invito means you invited him, he invited him, she invited him. La invito means you invited her, he invited her, she invited her. So now we move on on the same page, 291, with a written exercise. The um, instructions are to cover up the third hand column, translate the sentences in the left hand column, and check your translations with the right hand column. Remember to use lo for men and la for women. Each italicized word represents lo or la, depending on whether it is masculine or feminine. So we're going to see the first person is vio, he saw her. La vio, she saw him. Lo vio, 
you saw him, lo vio. The same goes with invitó and visitó. Then on page 292, we go into the, um, a verb to remember, llevar, to take someone or something someplace. So to take someone or something someplace. Llevé, I took. Llevamos, we took. Llevó, you took. Llevaron, they took. Voy a llevar, I'm going to take. Words to remember. Qué lástima, what a pity. Mi abuelo, my grandfather. Simpático, charming. El campo, the country. Su, your, his, her, it's theirs. La llevó al cine. Did you take her to the movies? Anoche, last night. Mi primo, in masculine, my cousin. Mi prima, it's in feminine, my cousin. Lo llevé, I took him. La llevé, I took her. La llevé al cine, I took her to the movie. So now we're going into the bottom part of page 292. It's called, this is a new um, example or a new version of the things that, of the uh, items that we've been, we've, they've been teaching us. It's a new setup. Dialogos entre dos estudiantes. Dialogues between two students. It's a conversation. The first student asks the questions. The second student answers them. Dialogo uno. This entire conversation is about Carlos. Every law in it refers to Carlos. ¿Vio usted a Carlos? Sí, lo vi esta mañana. ¿Dónde lo vio? Lo vi en el despacho. ¿Lo vio en Hamlet anoche? Sí, lo vi en Hamlet anoche. Lo vio en Romeo y Juliet. And now we're moving into page 293. And on the slides, I'm going to move you to page 293. Is the left hand side page. Dialogo 2. This entire conversation is about Isabel. Every line in it refers to Isabel. Sorry about my dogs um, snoring. Remember that they go to sleep every time I start one of these sessions. It's so funny. ¿Vio usted a Isabel? Sí, la vi esta tarde. ¿Dónde la vio? La vi en la clase. ¿La vio en Romeo y Julieta la semana pasada? Sí, la vi en Romeo y Julieta la semana pasada. Trabajó muy bien. ¿La vio en Hamlet anoche? Sí, la vi en Hamlet anoche. I'm just going to read Dialogo 3 and then Dialogo 4, you can read it on your own. Dialogo 3, this entire conversation is about mi abuelo, my grandfather. In our house, we call nuestros abuelos abuelita and abuelito, uh, which means um, it's a, an endearment term. It's kind of like a little abuela and little abuelo, abuelita and abuelito. Oh, I got to tell you a story. So my nephews, my two boy nephews, they have a, a friend, uh, a little uh, American friend, Caucasian friend that visits them all the time. And every time they go to visit Abuelito and Abuelita, they go, I got to go to Abuelito and Abuelita to visit them. So now the little friend calls uh, my my nephews, I mean, my, my parents also, she calls them Abuelito and Abuelita. That is so funny. It's adorable. Every time she goes visit them, she says, hi, Abuelito, hi, Abuelita. It's funny. Um, so... Dialogo 3. This entire conversation is about mi abuelo, my grandfather. Every law in it refers to grandfather. ¿Vio usted a mi abuelo esta mañana? No, no lo vi esta mañana. Lo vi anoche. ¿Dónde lo vio? Lo vi en mi casa. ¿Lo invitó a su casa? Sí, lo invité a tomar la cena en mi casa anoche. ¿Lo invitó a la fiesta? Sí, lo invité a la fiesta. ¿Aceptó la invitación? Sí, aceptó la invitación con mucho gusto. Su abuelo es muy simpático. So, Dialogo 4 is uh, on your own. Make sure that you read it. Uh, I, I remember that when you see lo, it's for the masculine, masculine form. La is for the feminine form. So, now we're on page 294, and we're going to take a look at the note after Dialogo 4. It says, you can never separate an auxiliary from its verb. For example, in the e invitado, I have invited 
you can never separate the word E from invitado. Pronouns precede both the auxiliary and the main verb. The auxiliary and the main verb can never be separated. Never, never be separated. Example, lo he invitado, I have invited him. Never say he lo invitado, that makes no sense. It's always lo he invitado. Los he invitado, I have invited him. Them, los estoy castigando, I am punishing them. Never say estoy los castigando, it doesn't make sense. It's always los estoy castigando. In the future form, the pronouns can go either before the verb or after the verb. I'm going to see him. Voy a verlo o lo voy a ver. I'm going to invite her. Voy a invitarla o la voy a invitar. I'm going to take her to the movies. Voy a llevarla al cine or la voy a llevar al cine. Either way is perfectly fine and you will hear, hear it used um, interchangeably. It doesn't make any difference whether you use Voy a verlo o lo voy a ver is the same thing. In ordinary conversation, you will hear the pronouns used either before or after the verbs of the future form. So now on the pod, bottom of page 294, it, it's a sentence forming exercise. Combine the words, the words in different ways to form as many sentences as you can. Be sure to use words from each of the columns in every sentence you form. So as I've done before, I'm just going to use, uh, going to make one combination from each of these sections. In section A, I'm going to use, mi primo me llevó al cine. Section B, and that's page 295, lo he invitado a la clase. Now we're going to move to page 296. And it's uh, exercise, this one is the exercise in translation. And I am going to read you the uh, sentences in Spanish so you can translate them in English, even though the exercise in translation tells you to translate the sentences into Spanish. I do it this way because I want you to hear the sentences in Spanish and you start getting accustomed of translating it in your head into English because that's how I learned from English to Spanish, from how I learned how I spoke Spanish and I learned English. So I heard the, the sentence in English and I translated them in my head into Spanish. So now what I'm asking you to do is for you to listen to the sentence in Spanish and you translate it into English so you know exactly what the sentence translates to and you can do it in writing as well because this is a written exercise that they're asking you to do but this is just to get you used to listening the sentences in Spanish and I'm going to do one through ten as I've done before and that is at the bottom of page 296. Mi primo me llevó al cine. Mi hermano me llevó a la playa. Mi tío los llevó al circo. Mi tía las llevó a la fiesta. Mi hermana nos llevó al mercado. El doctor nos llevó a la ópera. Elena nos invitó al concierto. Dorotea lo invitó a la fiesta. Mi tío la llevó al despacho. Mi tío me llevó al campo. So now we're going to see page 297. And it goes into lo also means it in masculine form. La means it in feminine form. So that's top of page 297. If it refers to a masculine word, use lo. If it refers to a feminine, if it refers to a feminine word, use la. For example, el libro es interesante. Lo leí. The book is interesting. I read it. Since it refers to book, which is a masculine word in Spanish, el libro, you must use the masculine pronoun for it, lo. So the easy way I would I would see it um, if you were learning how to do the masculine and feminine, 
take a look at the book translate el libro look at it then say oh so in general if it ends in o it's going to be lo if it ends in a it's going to be la la blusa is bonita donde la compro the blouse is pretty where did you buy it since it refers to blouse which is a feminine word in spanish la blusa you must use the feminine word for it la Las means them, either feminine persons or feminine things. Los means them, either masculine persons or masculine things. Examples. Los artículos son interesantes. Los leí ayer. The articles are interesting. I read them yesterday. Look at artículos. It ends in O, O-S. It's uh, safe to say that it's going to be los. Since then refers to articles, which is a masculine word in Spanish, los artículos, you must use the masculine pronoun for them, los, las blusas, it's, it ends in as, as. Las blusas son muy bonitas, las vio, the blouses are very pretty, did you see them? Since then refers to blouses, which is a feminine word in Spanish, las blusas, you must use the feminine prom pronoun for them, las. If it refers to an abstract idea, as in an I doubt it, you must use the masculine pronoun for it, lo, lo dudo, lo creo, and so forth. For example, lo dudo, I doubt it, no lo dudo, I don't doubt it, no lo comprendo, I don't understand it, voy a arreglarlo, I am going to arrange it, lo arregló, did you arrange it? And then we're going to finish this chapter with a written exercise. Translate the following sentences into Spanish. Check your sentences with the correct translations below this exercise. Verbs used in this exercise, ayudar, arreglar, dejar, comprar, tomar, vender, ver, comprender, leer, terminar. So I'm gonna give you an ex example. You're gonna see, I read it yesterday, the article, el artículo, lo leí ayer. I read it last week, la leí la semana pasada. The novel, la novela. So the it, it's the novel. It is the article. It is the play. And then on page 298, you see the play, la comedia. La comedia ends in A. You're going to assume you're, uh, that it's going to be la comedia, as we've seen on the exercise before. If the it, that item, ends in O, it's most likely that you're going to say lo o los. If it ends, if that item ends in a or as, you're going to uh, assume, presume into um, mostly not er on, you're not going to be uh, incorrect in assuming that it's a la or a las. So you have your exercises 298 and then in 299 you have check your you have the sentences to check and then a note tomar to take footer vehicles tomé el tren I took the train tomé el avión I took the plane tomé café I had coffee Tomé la cena, I had, I took dinner, or I ate dinner. It's usually comí la cena. Llevar to take people. Llevé a mi primo al cine, I took my cousin to the movies. Llevé a mi abuelo a la fiesta, I took my grandfather to the party. Llevé a mi mamá al campo, I took mother to the country. So this was a, a short um, lesson, but um, it teaches you, it shows you how to use lo and las in the feminine or masculine, in the masculine or feminine uh, version. And then we're going to move on to um, tare la tarea. We're going to leer las lecciones número 33 y 39. Read lessons number 33 and 39 in the book y continuar viendo canales de televisión o YouTube en español con subtítulos en inglés. 
And let me show you, let me show you, número 39, el capítulo 39, lección número 39, it's the imperfect form. I'm going to have to, I might have to um, change the camera angle to not mirror me because then you don't see the actual, you see it backwards instead. So I might do that for next time. With um, our last part of the PowerPoint. And the reason I pulled up this one um, Bible verse, it's because we are seeing really strange stuff happening in our world. And it's Jude chapter seven. In the same way, Sodom and Gomorrah and neighboring towns practiced immoral sexual relations and pursued other sexual urges by undergoing the punishment of eternal fire, they serve as a warning. Judas capítulo 7. Lo mismo que los que esos ángeles también Sodoma y Gomorra y las ciudades vecinas se entregaron a la prostitución y se dejaron llevar por vicios contra la naturaleza, por eso sufrieron el castigo del fuego eterno y quedaron como advertencia para todos. So, there we go. Um, this is um, another weekly lesson. Mm -hmm. Again, if you get a chance to go through the entire um, chapter mm -hmm. or the entire content, just leave me a uh, comment mm -hmm. or suggestions on what else you would want me to um, present uh, to mm -hmm. continue learning Spanish. I don't know if you want me to present reactions. I don't know if you want me to maybe read. I know that I have another um, uh, playlist where I'm reading you a story about uh, two girls that starting started investigating the uh, stolen paintings and but I haven't finished it yet. So I don't know if I, I might bring it in into this one um, playlist instead. I'll see what I can do. But if you have any more ideas on how to, you would want me to present um, Spanish examples aside from uh, easy sentences to use when you're abroad or um, an actual uh, content uh, theory learning, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you next week. Again, as I've said before, live streams are still not on the, um, not in the future. I'm waiting for my husband to give me the okay on those. But as far as content, let me know what other information you would like to know, and I will be more than happy to present it to you. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. If nothing else, Los quiero mucho. Adiós. Chao. Hasta la próxima.